All right, guys, so the entire world is burning up again. The two biggest economies in the world, they are facing headwinds. China is cracking down hard on Evergrande. Regulators there, they have accused the company of the largest corporate financial fraud in history. Then we have awful news coming out of Baltimore in the US. A major port has been paralyzed after a horrific ship collision. Lives are lost and the economic impacts on a city will be devastating. But let's start with China first. The property crisis isn't over yet. Beijing has uncovered possibly the world's biggest corporate fraud and hates are gonna roll. It's China after all. This is a horrific $78 billion crisis engineered by Evergrande. Their onshore unit have inflated revenue for two long years. This is a stain on China's regulators and is a symptom of the real estate boom getting out of control. It's a classic case of recognizing sales in advance and booking it in. And that is dangerous and it's essentially fraud. Evergrande is said to have booked in profits from the apartment sales that were pre-sold but not delivered yet. It's a throwback to the good old Enron days of realizing profits before it actually came in. And according to regulators, these inflated figures accounted for half of the company's total revenue in 2019 and almost 80% in 2020. That's a mind-boggling amount, but it gets worse. The size of the Evergrande fraud is so big that it's game over if convicted. The Evergrande accounting scandal might be $78 billion big. It's seven times bigger than the WorldCom fraud from the US back in 2002. It tells us how out of control the property boom in China became. It's a key reason why this sector has to implode or the Chinese economy can never have genuine growth. But what's the point of overstating the profits? And this is where greed takes over. By inflating your profits, you make your company look good. On the surface, it seems like business is booming, everything seems placid, and borrowing money will become much cheaper. Using these inflated figures, the company issued over 20 billion yuan in bonds. That's nearly $3 billion worth of loans. This is fraudulent because you are tricking investors into pouring money to a company that isn't doing as well as it claims. By overstating your revenue, you can borrow more money at lower interest rates. And this helped Evergrande to grow into a monstrous size and enable the consistent financing of development projects. It's like you faking your yearly income to get a bigger line of credit from the bank. Except in Evergrande's case, its magnitude's bigger. They have over $100 billion in liabilities left and part of that came from the company appearing bigger than it was. And when there's financial fraud, you best believe that accounting firm will get scrutinized as well. Beijing is breathing down the neck of PricewaterCoopers, PwC, one of the four big accounting giants. And here's the problem. Pricewater is a common auditor for China developers. They aren't just hired by Evergrande alone. If regulators crack down hard on the company, it might reveal even more systemic problems across the developers. But how did this mess even start? Now, this is a combination of too much focus on real estate and the developers going ham, going haywire, going cowboy. During the 2017 Party Congress, President Xi made the famous statement that houses are built to be inhabited and not for speculation. You're supposed to live in them and not get rich off them. And if you didn't know by now, China enacts policies from a top-down approach. So whatever Xi Jinping says will become reality sooner or later. More crucially, he said China would increase the supply of homes from multiple parties. It's the classic increase the supply to overwhelm demand to lower housing prices. However, the developers went cowboy on this they decided it was time to triple down on their borrowing. The developers leveraged themselves to the gills to build more homes and fulfill demand. We can see the amount of loans for real estate development exploded from 2017 to the start of 2019. Loan growth went from 10% to nearly 25%. Real estate loans led the entire Chinese economic growth. It was bigger than services and industrial loans combined. That's how crazy things went back then. For investors in China, there are few alternatives to park your money. The Chinese stock market is volatile and there are restrictions to investing in US stocks as well. So the only options left for you are gold and real estate. Now the rich in China have a ton of money. So buying up the supply isn't a problem. You have crazy things happen, right? People were divorcing to buy up multiple properties and then remarrying after that. It became a free-for-all property grab for the wealthy. And obviously Beijing wasn't too happy about that. So they came up with a set of restrictions in 2020 called the three red lines policies and they were slapped on both the developers and buyers. For buyers in tier 1 cities like Shanghai, the hurdles became extreme. It became insane. To buy a second home, 
you need up to 80% down payment of the total home price. And that caused home prices to stabilize and come crashing down. Great for people on the street, but bad news for developers. They need home prices to stay high to finance their endless borrowing. And for developers, Beijing imposed caps on their ability to borrow. If companies violate this limit, such as a 70% ceiling on the debt-to-asset ratio, their debt growth is curtailed, it's limited now. So if you are a cowboy borrower, chances are you couldn't borrow any more money. And that collapsed the house of cards. The developers couldn't finance their projects, homes went unbuilt, and property prices started dropping fast. And that's why developers are in a big mess today. China essentially drained the swamp. And whatever shady things the developers did to borrow money are now being exposed to the world. And this cleaning house will likely take longer and don't be surprised if more shenanigans from developers are uncovered. I don't think Evergrande will be the last. We are seeing the fallout from unbridled greed and this is an important lesson that China is learning. And that's why Beijing is moving away from real estate towards high-tech manufacturing to drive the economy. The property sector used to account for 25% of China's GDP and this is going to gradually drop while technology and manufacturing is going to fill in the gap. We can see the fall of real estate and the rise of Chinese technology. Now back in 2017, technology was hardly above 10% of GDP while real estate accounted for nearly a quarter of the entire economy. And a big shift is happening. Just last year, real estate came in at 19.4% while technology accounted for 14.3% of GDP. And as the years goes by, this gap is starting to narrow. China is piling on more money to industry to shift the economy away from the zombie property sector. And by 2026, technology is going to drive 19% of China's GDP, which will exceed the share of real estate then. And this is an orchestrated implosion we must understand. It is bound to happen sooner or later. If Beijing doesn't pop the balloon today, it will be magnitudes worse. So what we are witnessing is the inevitable. China is steering the economy towards sustainable growth. But in the meantime, there could be more surprises from the developers. And halfway across the world, something bad just happened. The US economy just took a nasty blow as well. Something tragic happened in Baltimore. A Singapore flagship collided with the Baltimore Bridge. It plowed through a pylon and sent the bridge collapsing down. Just look at the pictures. It's utter devastation and people are still missing. It's a horrific event that has shocked the US and crippled the entire port of Baltimore. And this tragedy also extends to the city itself and by extension, the entire US as well. Baltimore relies on their port to drive the local economy. The city and the state of Maryland are about to feel a ton of financial pain. The big issue is the location of the Baltimore Key Bridge. This is the most inland port of the entire East Coast. That means ships need to sail into Baltimore itself to dock. When a ship collided with the Key Bridge, it collapsed the choke point that led into the port. That effectively cut away the only route that links the port to the Atlantic Sea. There's no way in or out of the port right now. Looking at the map, we can see the full impact of the collision. There are multiple cargo ships and goods trapped behind the collapsed bridge. Multiple terminals are down, important commodities like coal and heavy machinery and sugar are locked in. They can't be exported out. The only saving grace is the Trade Point Atlantic Terminal that escaped the devastation. However, the bulk of trade has been disrupted. This is bad news for the city and the state of Maryland. And that's why Biden is now scrambling to fix the bridge. But it's going to take weeks and months just to clear the debris alone. Baltimore is a blue state and if Biden can't fix this mess soon, his campaign could come crashing down as well. So the stakes here are huge for the US economy, for the city and for the elections. And here's how important the port alone is for Baltimore. It generates a ton of employment, 15,000 jobs directly and 140,000 jobs indirectly. And this provides people with over $3 billion of income, $2.6 billion in business revenue and $400 million in tax money. With the port shut down, this is going to cripple the local economy. There could be massive job losses going forward and businesses will be affected. The issue here is the narrative. Now, we have all been told that global shipping is fine, that the supply chain is efficient. But if you look at the situation globally and within the US itself, we are facing multiple supply side crises one after the other. So a massive supply chain shift needs to be done. Stuff that gets shipped from Baltimore to the rest of the world to the US needs to be rerouted to other ports. And this means big trucks and freight trains for big exports like coal and vehicles. And what does this do? It's really simple. It adds more cost to the supply chain and makes inflation even worse. Baltimore Bridge Collapse will redirect cargo across the US. And this is going to be a logistical nightmare. 
While it's true that ports along the East Coast can absorb the shock, it is still a major supply chain disaster and we are not saying that goods will be stuck there forever. The issue here are the delays and increased cost of shipping that will piss off customers across the entire East Coast and across the world as well. Especially when the global economy is facing recession, any disruption adds more straws to the camel's back. The ports of Virginia and New York will have to absorb a 10% increase in volume, which is enough to cause big issues. A sudden 10 or 20% increase in volumes through a port is bad news. It's enough to cause massive backlog, congestion, and ships waiting offshore. There are all sorts of delays that can compound on themselves. It's the 2020 lockdowns all over again, except this time it's localized to the US East Coast. According to reports, the port shutdown and bridge collapse is going to cost up to $15 million a day in economic activity. So if Biden takes 100 days to bring the port back online, the damage could compound to $1.5 billion. That's a ton of money lost and jobs circling down the drain. The Baltimore port is one of the biggest ports in the US. It is ranked number 17 in terms of tonnage transported. Over 40 million tons of trade goes through the port, the majority of which are exports from the US to the world. Imports to the US are also affected. So it's a crisis hitting from all angles here. Because the port is down indefinitely, we are going to witness a massive reshuffle of the supply chain. Cargoes will have to go by freight to other cities and cause massive congestion at the ports. 40 million tons will have to move across to other cities and it will have to go by land. The American Trucking Association just shared shocking figures of the crisis. Almost 5,000 trucks carrying $28 billion worth of goods will have to be rerouted. That's the scale of the problem. This ultimately adds more cost to shippers and consumers. From the East Coast to the Midwest, the impacts will be felt the most with rising prices. There are tons of second-order effects that we can't see just yet. If farming equipment can't reach the Midwest during the planting season, there could be a food crisis coming up ahead. Farmers' incomes could take a big hit if the port isn't open soon. And that's just one black swan risk. Baltimore is a transit hub for a ton of machinery flow. In January 2023, over 100,000 tons of machinery cargo went through the port. These are your tractors, combine harvesters and mowers rolling into and out of Baltimore. That's how important this single port is. And this will be the ultimate challenge for the Biden administration. We have two hot wars going on now. The Middle East and Ukraine, they are on fire. And those conflicts are getting worse every single day. Let's not forget the trade war with China and inflation surging back up. Now you throw in this bridge collapse into the mix, it's a recipe for disaster. I'm not sure if Biden can save the economy in time. If you're American, please leave me a comment down below. Do you think Biden can reopen the port of Baltimore before the November elections? Because if he doesn't, if he can't, it's probably a wrap for his campaign. But what's clear is the cost of cars, automobiles are going to hit up at least in the short term. Baltimore is the number one port for US auto imports. $22.5 billion of vehicles transit through the terminals, much more than Long Beach and Jacksonville. The port handled 750,000 vehicles back in 2023. There is a ton of cars and trucks that need to be diverted to other terminals. Companies like GM and Ford are already scrambling to reroute shipments after the collapse. And this will impact the CPI numbers and inflation. Don't get this twisted. That's not good for the US economy. It's another flashpoint for the global economy as well. And it's important to look at the global catastrophes out there. China's real estate crisis isn't over yet. Beijing has to continue imploding the property sector further, which will drag China's recovery out a little longer. The Baltimore Bridge also shows how fragile the global economy is, especially the global supply chains. Maryland is wrecked and the US economy just took a gut punch. It's as if the universe is trying to force a recession on the world. So hang tight guys because inflation isn't stopping and this chaos isn't ending just yet. But let me know what you think. Can China contain the real estate fallout? Can Joe Biden reopen Baltimore port in time? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.